Hello AAT, this is section 7.2, solving triangles and inverse trig. Um, you need to have your calculator with you. Uh, we will be going through how to do this on a TI-89. Um, my calculator here has a little damage, so we'll have to ignore that. But first thing, we need to make sure that your calculator is in degrees. So if, as I zoom in here, Right down here at the bottom, see I have RAD, which is radians, a different way to measure angles. So you need to make sure yours has DEG, which is degrees. If you are in radians, you're going to go to the mode button down here. And the mode button will bring up, if you can see it online, um, down three or four choices down is angle. And you need to toggle to the right, down to the right to make sure that you are in degrees. Push enter twice and see now I have that DEG at the bottom. So make sure you are in degrees on your calculator. All right, so we are setting up and solving right triangles. Whenever you're asked to solve a right triangle, that means to find all of the sides and the measures of the angles that are not always there. Remember for a um, to use trigonometry, we can think of the sine of the angle or cosine of the angle, tangent of the angle will equal ratios. And we talked about, we can write that as SOH, CAH, and TOA, which is SOKOTOA. Or Oscar had a heap of apples as long as it's in the order sine cosine tangent so we might want to write down those ratios first so we'll remember which is which so here this these trigonometry ratios are for right triangles so we're only using right triangles for this part of our trigonometry um, so if this is 40 the two non-right angles have to add up to 90, because 90 and 90 is 180 degrees in the triangle. So this one must be 50 degrees. Okay, so I should start out using what I have. I'm going to use that 40 degree angle and that 10. This, this 10 is the adjacent side to the 40, and the Y is the hypotenuse. The X would be the opposite. So if I wanted to find X first, that would be opposite and adjacent to that 40 degree angle, which is tangent. So the tangent of the angle equals opposite over adjacent. And everything has to be in the right order. And so we're going to solve for x. So we're going to multiply 10 over to the other side. And 10 times the tangent of 40 would equal x. On your calculator, you put it in on a TI-89, you put it in just like you see it. Again, I apologize for my 10, my calculator being not pretty. But there's a 10 times the tangent. Um, so there's times and tangent. You see sine, cosine, tangent, and blue right above the Y, Z, and T. So I'm going to put the second button tangent of, and it was of 40 degrees. And as long as it's in degrees, we just have to end that parentheses and push our proximate button, which is the yellow button and the enter. So this little double squiggle here means approximately. Otherwise, it's going to give you an exact answer, which will have still have a trick function in it. So I get 8.391. So I have that side, 8.391. I have that angle. Make sure it's clear what you have. And so i got to find one more side. So I'm going to still use that 40. I could use the 50, but I'd rather use something I already had. Don't do a trig ratio with the 90. It's not going to work. Um, this trig ratio is about the non-right angles, the acute angles in the right triangle. So if I want to find the Y, this is the hypotenuse, and this is the adjacent side. I'd rather not use that decimal since I just found it in case I punch something wrong. So which function has the adjacent side and the hypotenuse? That would be our cosine. So the cosine of the angle, 40 degrees, 
equals the adjacent, which is the 10, over the hypotenuse, which is the y. Make sure you put it in the right order. I need to multiply the y up to the other side. y times the cosine of 40 degrees equals 10. And to isolate the y to get y alone, I'm going to divide by the cosine of 40 degrees. That's just a number. You have to keep the cosine with the 40. And so I'm going to put in my calculator 10 divided by the cosine of 40. So let me clear that out. 10 divided by the cosine is the blue button cosine of 40. And make sure you end your parentheses or else your calculator is going to give you an error message. Put the approximate button, yellow button, enter, and I get 13.05. 13.054. Those are certainly reasonable answers. When I look at these, it should be 054, not 54. When I look at these sides, I can see that they would work in the Pythagorean theorem. The hypotenuse is the largest side. Okay, so let's work on this next one. So um, here I have 12 degrees. These two acute angles have to add up to 90. So if I do if I want to find this angle, I'm going to do 90 degrees minus the 12 degrees, which is our 78 degrees. Um, and then I'm going to find, let's find A first. So A is the opposite side to the 12. I'm going to use the 12 because that's what was given to me. And the 20 is the hypotenuse across from the right side right angle. So opposite over hypotenuse is sine. So the sine of 12 is the opposite, which is A over the hypotenuse of 20. Multiply the 20 to the other side, and A is 20 times the sine of 12. And we put that in our calculator. 20 times blue button sine of 12, end the parentheses, push the approximate button, 4.158. I like writing it on my cap on my um, triangles so I know what I've done and what I haven't done. So now we want B. B is the adjacent side to the angle, the side that's next to it that's not the hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse would be cosine. So the cosine of 12 degrees is the adjacent, which is B, over the hypotenuse 20. So B, if I multiply 20 to the other side, is 20 times the cosine of 12. Put that in my calculator. 20 times blue button cosine of 12, end my parentheses, approximate button 19.563. So now I have solved both of those triangles. It's a good idea to circle and put a box around all your answers so they're easy to find either down below or up on the figure so your teacher won't confuse any of your answers. So you can use trig ratios to help you determine the measures of angles in right triangles. If you're, we use inverse trig when we're looking for the angles. So remember, when you see something like this, a sine of an angle equals a value. The value is actually a ratio of two sides. So if you do the inverse sine, the opposite of sine, of that ratio, you will get back the angle. All right, so for instance, we know that the sine of the angle 30 degrees is 0.5. We could find that with our calculator. So if I do the inverse sine of 0.5, that ratio 1 to 2, I'm going to get back the angle. So inverse sine gives you back the angle. And the inverse functions are the yellow functions, inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse ta tangent above the y, z, and t. So on um, A, B, and C here, we're just trying to find the angle not to solve the whole triangle. So if I'm looking for an angle, make sure it is inside the function. So it's going to be the inverse sine, cosine, or tangent of a ratio is going to equal the angle. So it's what that function is actually equal to. So if I write it as my regular sine function, 
or cosine or tangent. First, I got to figure out which ratio I have. Now, I could use Pythagorean theorem to find this missing side, but I did, wasn't asked for it. I just want the angle. So I look, and this is the adjacent side, and this is the hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine. So the cosine of the angle, and that's what I was talking about, make sure the angle is what you're taking the cosine of would equal the ratio 7 to 13. To get x alone, to get cosine to the other side, that's when you're doing an inverse operation. So you're doing an inverse cosine of 7 thirteenths. So on your calculator, you just do inverse cosine, yellow button, cosine, yellow cosine of 7 over divided by 13. End of those parentheses. Inverse cosine of 7 divided by 13. And we do approximate button again, yellow button approximately, and it gets 57.421. And remember that's in degrees. So I'm going to put my little degree symbol in there so I'll remember that's an angle. All right, so try number or letter B and C. What left? Okay, and so here are our answers. For X, we ended up with 12.529. For X on C, we got 48.189. That actually, that could have been rounded up, um, which is fine either way. Um, notice here my ratio for tangent opposite over hypotenuse was 4 18ths. If you want to simplify that first and make it 2 ninths, you're welcome to because it's the ratio of the two sides. So you'll still get the same answer. You could simplify this 10 15ths to 2 over 3 first if you wanted to and you'd still get the same answer. Okay, so last two here. Example 8, solve the right triangles described below. So here... One thing we haven't talked about, whenever you draw a right triangle, kind of the convention is we have angle B here. We're going to call capital C the right angle every time. Okay, so normally the right angle will be C because that will make the hypotenuse little c. because um, we're used to a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, so our no other two acute angles, doesn't matter which is which, are a and b, and the side is a little a, and it's across from the angle a. So angle a is across from little a, and angle b is across from little b. So that's kind of the way it's really, um, you see it written most often, so that I know that if b is 28 degrees, and here, little a is 25. You know what it's across from, and that definitely matters. 25.3 centimeters. So here we're trying to solve the triangle, so we're trying to find everything. I'm going to switch colors. So what do I need to find? I need to find all the angles. So I got angle C, I got angle B, so I need angle A. So angle A would equal 90 degrees minus angle B, 28 degrees, and so angle A would be 62 degrees. So that's my first answer solving this whole triangle. And then let's say we want to find little b, the side b. So using 28, the angle, b, little b is opposite. And what I was given, little a, is adjacent. So opposite over adjacent is tangent. So the tangent of 28 degrees would be opposite B over adjacent 25.3. So I put in my calculator 25.3 times the tangent of 28 to find B. So 25.3 times the tangent of 28 degrees approximate button and I get 13.452 so that's little b equals 13.452 and then so that's that and that's that one and now I need to find c the hypotenuse I could do a squared plus b squared equals c squared I could totally use the Pythagorean theorem it's kind of ugly because I got these decimals or since we're learning trig, let's use the trig, finding the hypotenuse, 
using the 28. I could do opposite over hypotenuse using sine, or I could use adjacent over hypotenuse using cosine. I'm going to do the adjacent because I was given the 25, and then I'm being safer in case I made a mistake on the 13. So the cosine of the 28 equals adjacent 25.3 of the hypotenuse is C. This is the kind where we're going to divide. You multiply the C up to the other side, and then you divide by the cosine. So C equals 25.3 divided by the cosine of 28. So 25.3 divided by the cosine of 28.3. And notice I'm not using inverse cosine because I'm not looking for an angle. I'm looking for a side. Use inverse cosine when you're looking for an angle. Okay, I got 28.734 for that side C. 28.734. So I have now solved that triangle. Now this last one, B, um, X, Y, Z doesn't really tell us. Um, it, we're not using an X, uh, A, B, C, so we don't know what the hypotenuse is, but that's why they help um, by telling us that Y is going to be the hypotenuse. So if Y is the hypotenuse and Y equals 2, that means capital Y, the angle, is the right angle because the sides across from the angle as far as the capital Y and the lowercase y. And x is one of the other sides. It doesn't matter which. So x is 14. So z is my third side. Don't know that third side. So z is over there. So I need to angle z and I need angle x. So I need to find angle x, angle z, side z, and yeah, that'll be it. So I could use totally use Pythagorean theorem. Um, Oh, wait a minute, that doesn't work. The hypotenuse can't be, oh, it says if X is the hypotenuse. So, sorry about that. We'll change that up. <laughs> we need to rewrite that one, so I'm gonna get out a separate piece of paper. We'll try that once again. Okay, read that wrong, so draw it again. X is the hypotenuse is 14, which means little x is here across from it at the angle. So y is to any of the other sides. Apologize for that. So y is the opposite angle. Z is the third angle. So little z is the third side. Okay, so again, we can use Pythagorean theorem to find that third side, or we can use trig once we find the angles. Um, so let's do Pythagorean theorems this time. So y squared plus z squared equals x squared, because x is our hypotenuse using Pythagorean theorem. y squared is 2 squared is 4, plus z squared equals 14 squared, and 14 squared is 196. So I'm going to subtract 4. z squared is 196 minus 4, which is 192. So when we solve a squared problem, we do plus or minus, but here this is a side, this is a geometry problem, so it's just the square root of 192. Um, so we could try to simplify that, but since we're doing these as calculator problems, we're just going to do the square root. The square root button is right above the multiplication. Square root of 192. Put my parentheses in and push the approximate button is 13.856. So that's my side Z, 13.856. So don't get confused in your side Z and your angle Z. Okay, so we've got one side, we need two angles. So remember when we find the angles, that's when we use inverse trig. So let's try to find Y first. I'm going to use the two sides I was given. So Y Cross from y is the opposite side of 2 and the hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse is the sine. The sine of y equals 2 over 14. And this is when I put in the inverse sine because I'm looking for the angle of 2 fourteenths. You can, of course, simplify that to 1 seventh if you would rather. So inverse sine, inverse sine of 1 seventh or 2 fourteenths. 
Push the approximate button is 8.213. And then our side, uh, excuse me, that's our angle, degrees. I'm just going to put 0.2 degrees so I can fit it. And that's a little bitty angle, but it makes sense because this side is by far the smallest side. So remember these two angles have to add up to 90 degrees to, to I'm going to make this angle Y. So get angle Z, we get 90 degrees minus 8.2. 213. And on a calculator, it's good when you're subtracting or something. If I put in 90 and I just use the up button and I go grab that 8.2, so it's exactly the value that I got. Oops, I didn't put in my subtraction. So 90 minus, and then go up and grab the 8.2 equals 81.787. Eighty one point seven eight seven degrees. So that's the other angle. That's everything I need. Now go practice.